am I Matt? Hey, Matt. Me? Hi. Do you am ever I just, Mark? Do you ever just start a podcast and then immediately open a container to eat some fudge? Oh my god. No, I don't. I don't think I've ever done that. But you've never done that, ever? I'm I have a sneaking right suspicion that you've done it at least once. Maybe well, I'm doing it right now, so I'm chewing so, on some fudge. Oh, attaboy. That's some fudge right there. Dude, fudge is amazing. So I have a very serious question right now. What's that? Did you wait to open up this fudge container after we started the podcast? Oh, yeah. 100%. This <laughs> okay. is part of the podcast experience. Okay. This is, this I, is I by design. Wondered, because we were in Discord for like at least a few minutes beforehand that you could have opened the fudge at any point in time. Oh, yeah. I was but, just, as we were starting, I was looking at the fudge thinking, I think I'll probably eat some fudge. Okay. I'm like, it's probably, it's probably going to be better to do it during the podcast so that the people listening will know that I ate fudge. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's now they know for them to know this information. They know that much more about you now, Ron. You you should you should be proud of yourself. They so know if I come across like me. a guy who's eating fudge, now you guys know why. Because I've actually eaten fudge. Exactly. <laughs> they know nothing about me. I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah. Um, next time maybe I'll throw something unique in there for Well introduce for yourself, time. Matt. Who are who are who are you? Who is I am Matt? Matt? I am Matt. Oh he's Hi. Matt. Okay. Hi. Now I'm you've Matt. introduced yourself. That's oh, all we know. needed. Yeah, um, that's all we need. Speaking right, of which, so I was we're... thinking maybe we should start introducing ourselves at the beginning of the podcast. That might well, be good. Yeah, well, I'm Matt. Yeah. This other guy eating fudge is wrong. I'm Fudge. Just call me Fudge. Yeah, Big Fudge. Um, <laughs> and together, we make Rage Quitters, yes. the awesome podcast. Yeah, we're a podcast. About about video games. <clears throat> Where we talk about games that we played and, you know, yes, played them and shit. Exactly. So, this week, we're talking about Bayonetta. Yes. One and two. We both played it for the Switch. It recently came out for Switch. So. Yep. We were originally going to make this podcast just the first ep- first game, and then uh, mm-hmm. we finished the first game pretty quick, and we're like, fuck, I want to just play the second game. So, so we, we both played just the played game. the second game as well. I'm really glad that happened this way, because we both really enjoyed it enough to exactly. just play the second game. It kind of just All speaks right. to how good it was, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, before Bayonetta, wasn't there some type of big announcement that happened? There was some things that happened. So, uh, Nintendo had a Direct, and we don't, like, we don't normally talk about, we're not going to normally talk about a lot of news on here, but this is probably the big announcement that we're going to talk a lot about, it because Smash Bros. has been announced for the Nintendo Switch to be yeah, releasing so, this year. So, for those of you who don't know, the Direct, Nintendo Direct happened last week sometime, doesn't matter when. Um, but they, you know, showed the regular stuff, um, Mario Tennis, which looked awesome, obviously, but then they were showing a bunch of Splatoon 2 stuff that nobody really cared about, and all of a sudden, <laughs> they're all of a sudden, they're like, that's it, that's the Direct, and in a classic Nintendo fashion, this is how they announced Smash, um, for Wii, Wii U and 3DS, by the way, they're like, mm-hmm. end of Direct, and then they showed the Smash trailer, and yep. the Smash trailer opened up with fucking Splatoon characters again, so we're all like, what the fuck is this, more Splatoon 2 bullshit? Yeah, I thought they were um, reporting the f- first Splatoon maybe to a yeah. Switch or something, I didn't understand. Um, but then, uh, the, it, they zoom in on the Inkling's eye, and it's the Smash logo, and I'm assuming, I wasn't watching it on Twitch, I didn't watch it real time, but I'm assuming Twitch had exploded, and, uh, yeah, yeah. so that's kind of all we know <laughs> about Smash for Switch. Yeah, I mean, we know Splatoon characters are in it. We know Mario and Link are in it. That's all we yeah, know. Yeah, that's legitimately it. And some vague outlines of characters that... Were yeah, people have been, like, trying to look at the outlines to try to predict who they are. I think that it was just, like, the general lineup from most of the games. Nothing surprising yeah, is going to be I, in that, exactly. that layout yeah. there. Um, and that's kind of what it was from people's outlines. So. Yeah. From my... Yeah. from A lot of people are speculating whether this is a port of Smash 4 or if it's a new game. I'm going to go out and say I think this has to be a new game, or they would have announced I kind of it as Smash 4 Deluxe. They would have <laughs> announced it. I think they, because if it's not a new game, like, there's no hype leading up to it, like, if it's a port, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the second people find out it's a port, they don't care anymore. I so, think it'll still sell just as well as it that, would yeah. if it wasn't a port, but... No, no, no I'm not it, saying yeah. it won't sell. That's why I'm like, saying if, they, wise, if it was a port, they would have just said it, because people would care, would like it just as yeah. much, personally. It, it, it didn't need to be, like, this, like ordeal i guess when they announced it yeah so yeah exactly. i agree i think it's plus the plus the line obviously mm-hmm. the line as as of the, <laughs> the line video. oh yeah the the <laughs> the little the logo is a little tiny bit different so you know yeah, it's just a little bit, tiny bit different. it's definitely a new game the line. it's gotta um, be <laughs> yeah so i think that's 
kind of really all that came out of yeah. the Nintendo Direct. Well, the news that we're going to talk about, at least. Yeah, N- it makes me a lot Nintendo more hyped Direct. for E3, I'll say that. Yeah. I'm looking forward exactly. to seeing what they yeah. have to say. That's probably going to be the primary focus of E3 2018 for Nintendo, I think. So I kind of think so, too. So, All right, cool. well, let's move on to Bayonetta. Um, and we're going to combine these um, Bayonetta 1, these games, into kind of, well, hit each point about each game, I guess, but we're kind of mm-hmm. combining it. So we're talking about Bayonetta 1 and then <clears throat> Bayonetta 2, like, directly after. Yeah. Because a lot of it's the same, obviously, so... Um, if we're not... So we'll just, we'll just, yeah, we'll just kind of, like, compare them as we're talking yeah. about each pivotal point, because there's no reason to go through the full list twice. Yeah. So... So, uh, do you want to just briefly explain what the <clears throat> game is, or try to? Uh, oh my god, how do you explain Bayonetta? Um, I uh, should look uh, up when it came out, because I didn't write that down like an idiot. I didn't either. Um, <laughs> so, while you do that, I'll try to explain... Basically, okay. in Bayonetta, you're playing as a Umbra Witch, is what they're called, and you're fighting angels. That's kind of the premise of the entire game. You're fighting these angels. Um, yeah. And in Bayonetta 1, um, now I need to remember the story, Bayonetta 1. Oh, you kind of like find this little kid, and um, there's kind of just a lot of stuff happening. Basically, in Bayonetta 1, the actual story is you're trying to find this gem. And this gem is supposed to help you um, remember things. Because you kind of just woke up from like a 500 year sleep or something or 200 year. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're trying to find this gem to help you remember. And then stuff happens along the way. In Bayonetta 2, one of your friends... Uh, this isn't really spoiling. I mean, obviously spoilers. We're talking no, about spoilers, yeah. Yeah. Um, but in Bayonetta 2, one of your friends from the first game dies and you're trying to save her life. So you travel to hell. Uh, that's kind of what that game's about. Yep. So you're so, fighting both angels and demons in the second game. Yes, in the second game. <clears throat> Correct. And you're still obviously Bayonetta, a number of which in the second yep. And but, uh, basically, the story doesn't matter. Is what Matt's trying to say. It's the premise is that you're you're fighting a bunch of things as a sexy, big breasted, big booty woman. Yes, I forgot to yeah. mention that <laughs> she was definitely very sexual. <laughs> so also, by the way, what I learned was she was like um, made like the character concept was made by a female. So I thought oh, that was really? really interesting. Yeah, ah, that is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, just to clarify too, uh, Band had a first released on the PS3, um, 360 and PC in 2009. Or not PC in 2009. It was, uh, PS3 and 360 in 2009. Uh, nice. PC, I think, was just recently that they ported it. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then Band 2 came out exclusively for the Wii U in, uh, 2014. So. Nice. And uh, we said this before, but we both played this on Switch because it just yep. recently came out for Switch. They ported them both. So, and they also announced Bayonetta three, which I'm actually super psyched for. I'm, yeah, I'm now getting that day one because <laughs> yeah. I don't know which I like it's it's stuff. going to be day one. Um, so, um, I guess the like the genre of the game is kind of just like a, it's kind of a hack and slash, except you're say, not really yeah. hacking and slashing. You're punching and shooting. Yeah, it's kicking. like a it's it's. Imagine like if God of War was a lot more intuitive with their the fighting mechanics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually like pretty... combos and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, you have combos and stuff, and there's tons of combos. Well, we'll get into that. That's fine. All mm-hmm. right, let's let's first talk about graphics, I guess. Sure. Um. um so I mean, the, the graphics aren't anything like amazing, but I really like the style that the game has. Um. Just with how the yeah. the angels are designed, how it introduces everything in the game, yeah. <clears throat> like when you're gonna get to a boss fight, it shows a book opening, or it sh- it like t- fades to like a book page, and then it uh, closes the book and shows. The That's a great. Stuff. I love that. Yeah, yeah, whenever you whenever you meet a new enemy or a bo- a new boss, or um, you know, even your like when you do your like special like your tortures oh, or whatever. Yeah. Those sometimes get that, and then you can go view them. Obviously, when you get this animation, then you can go read more about them. Mm-hmm. But the animation's super cool. I thought that was really unique. Um, that they like they introduced the enemies with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Also, Bayonetta is sexy as hell, despite this being a game from two thousand nine. Right. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so one complaint I have, at least about the first game, um, is that the tech. Well, I didn't love the setting that the text. The texture... I don't, how do I want to say this? <laughs> I don't... The setting kind of gave the texture... The feel of the game... Like, to me, it was kind of bland. Does that yeah. make sense? No, I can agree with that. Especially with, like, uh, like when you're in the city in Vigrid itself. There's yeah. a lot of areas that felt repeated. 
Like, yeah. the, almost the maps were, like, reused over and over again for each level. Yeah, it, it felt mm-hmm. really weird. Like, it, it felt like, so, like, because you're in Vigard, Italy, right? I think is what it is. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, like, to me, Italy is bright and, like, got colors and stuff like that. And I don't know if they were trying to, like, set, like, a like a medieval feel to the game or something. But, like, that's, like, it was, it wasn't really bright. It just, like, I don't know. It was just weird. I yeah. can't really explain. It just felt wrong for the setting i guess mm-hmm. so it felt yeah and that's something that i think bayonetta 2 fixed uh, really well is that there's a lot more yes. variety in like the areas that yeah you're in. you 100%. actually do not spoilers but and you do go back to vigrid in the second one but i think the main point is that that's not the whole game there's just like a couple chapters in there yeah um yeah. everything else is extremely varying well and you start design. you start in a different city which yeah. looks way better than Big Red, by the way. Like, mm-hmm. so much better. And then you go to hell, um, and um, that looks really great. I just thought the... the gra- you originally said to me that the graphics weren't that much better, but as I was playing the game, I felt the graphics were significantly better in Bayonetta 2, just because of the whole textured, like, feel to the game. They're better, but they're, they didn't... <clears throat> so I was expecting a game from 2009 to look way worse than... Yeah, I agree with that. But, from being from 2009, it didn't yeah. look that bad. Keep that in mind that the Wii U had about the same power as the 360 and the PS3, so yeah. it does make sense that it had it looks pretty identical, just with like same hardware limitations. In, improved like textures, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Like the graphics weren't that much better. Just mm-hmm. like this, I think the setting really gave it a unique. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They just did better with it. So yeah, I will say that the animations were pretty. Uh, cool on Bayonetta herself, but on almost everyone else, they're pretty awful. <laughs> like, uh, I'm yeah. thinking specifically of Enzo. Like, oh my god, I would agree. Yeah. dated. <laughs> yeah. Enzo looked really bad in Bayonetta 1. I don't I didn't notice it as much. In, well, he's not really in Bayonetta 2 that much. He's anymore. in, like, the beginning and the end, yeah. Yeah. But I agree, like, Enzo looked really bad in the first game. That mm-hmm. The entire first, the, the cutscenes in the first game didn't look that great. The cutscenes were weird because they did a lot more of the, like, it's it looked like a cutscene, but no one's mouths were moving. They did a lot of that in the first game, but I, they didn't do quite as much of in the second game. In the second game, they did it, but they did it more of a, more as yeah. like a storybook instead so, of so, being just a So what Ron's talking about, yeah, is mm-hmm. like, basically, like, a cutscene had the voices, right? But yep. the animation to go along with it was just, like, screenshots. And, mm-hmm. like, in Bayonetta 1, you were going through, like, a film reel, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I thought that was unique, um, and I don't remember if Bayonetta two does that. I can't. It didn't it stand does. out to me. It does. It does it. I think it does it a little bit better than Bayonetta one. It Maybe looks that's like why a film reel in the first me. one. <clears throat> yeah, but it's like in the second one, it almost looks like a storybook where it's panning around a lot. Oh yeah, like does. characters yeah, are yeah. moving on like the top left and the top right of the screen and stuff like that. Like it transitions a lot. Yeah. So yeah, that was really cool too. That's pretty mm-hmm. unique in a game like that. I just remember getting kind of annoyed within the first game with how much there was, like... It was a lot in the first game. (laughs) With, like, these final cutscenes. People screaming at each other, but they're not moving their lips. (laughs) Yeah. It it, it takes a little bit to get used to. Yeah. And maybe that's why I didn't (laughs) notice it as much in the second game, because I I already played the first game like that. So maybe it just... Maybe you just kind of got used to it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Do you want to give... Do you have yeah, do you want to score stuff? I don't know if I have anything else really to say about the graphics. We, th- we talked a lot more about the graphics than I thought we were going to. Yeah, I know. There's not, there's not a ton to talk about, I guess. All right, so... The stuff uh, we talked about, so... Scale of 10, 1, one to 10, and this is a true scale. That's not like a 7 is complete dog shit. Yeah. Like, a 2 is complete dog shit. 5 is average. 9 is really good. 10 is, like, the best ever. Mm-hmm. 1 is, like, the worst we've ever seen. So, um, with 5 being average on a 1 to 10 scale... Go for it, Ron. I'm going to give Bayonetta 1 a 7, and I'm going to give Bayonetta 2 an 8. Interesting. Okay. Um, I was going to give Bayonetta <laughs> 1 a 5. Just because okay. I, I hated, I really hated the, like, the setting. And, like, they just could have done a better job painting Vigrid in a different way. Sure. I thought it... As I, after I played it for a while, it didn't like stand out to me as much because I was used to it. But right away, I just was really disappointed with that. Mm-hmm. And I think I'll give Bane and a two. I want to. I'm I'm debating between a seven or an eight. I think I'm gonna give it a seven. Yeah, that's let's, let's stick with seven. I will say that I it's think, really uh, good. 
I think Bayonetta it- one. Uh, Bayonetta 1's Bayonetta was hotter than Bayonetta 2's, in my opinion. I completely disagree. <laughs> I liked, <laughs> I like I like short, versus short I like short hair, hair Bayonetta. Oh, first of all, the glasses in Bayonetta 1 were complete. I couldn't get over them. They're so bad. <laughs> they're ridiculous. They're, they're so bad. At least in Bayonetta 2, her glasses, like, are a little bit more modern and, like, smaller and don't but have now, fucking butterflies But in butterflies Bayonetta 2, she it. looks like a soccer mom, kind of, a little bit. So? The hair does, especially. I mean, the hair does, kind of, but I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I think of. Given that's that's a very small little scale to compare it to. But yeah, it's a point lower, mostly because Virid is uh, meh for me compared to the yeah, difference in the other two. It just was very average for me. I just remember playing it right away and thinking how like how much I didn't enjoy the graphics. That's yeah. why I'm putting it as a 5. Sure. And then but I love Bayonetta the style 2, of the game, so that's kind of why yeah, I'm still keeping it Maybe that's why. I don't know. Bayonetta <clears> 2 <throat> really improved, I think, in a lot of ways. I could have given it an 8. I don't yeah. know. But, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Well, the next thing we got is sound. So, style, voice acting, or style, uh, music, voice acting, sound effects, uh, score, basically environmental sounds, anything in the game that was related to audio. Yeah. So, so, I'm just going to go right out and say it. I think Bayonetta 1's sound was better. I kind of agree. What song do they... Like, there's a song... <laughs> the, like, that fits uh, the I Love You one or whatever? The, it was, like, yeah. a Frank Sinatra song that yeah, they remixed it, into, uh, into, into, like, like a this, pop like a setting, kind of. Sexy, <laughs> pop, like, weird song. If yeah. it fits perfectly. But it was so catchy game. that I couldn't stop like, I know. thinking about it when I wasn't I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, my gosh. And I don't think Bayonetta 2 had that. It had a song kind of similar to that, but it did not have that same song. It was a different okay. song. Okay, it was just... Uh, maybe that's why it didn't stick out. It just wasn't as good. I exactly. agree with you. I think the for the reason of that song... It was basically just that song. Like, you knew that you were getting into, like, a really stuff. cool part of the game when you, like, yeah. you're fighting. Yeah, and, you're and that's what that. it was. Yeah. It was like when you were boss fighting and stuff, and it was just like this. Like it was like when you were starting to win like, the boss fight, it started to yeah, play stuff when you're yeah. getting to the climax. <laughs> it's fucking great. It Otherwise, awesome. the music, um, I think, just fit the game well. I, mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in music. Like, if you don't really notice it, that's a good thing in the game. Oh yeah, for um, sure. So I didn't really notice it. I love that song, and when you notice it in a good way, it's really good too. Like that song, for example, that we were talking yeah. about. When it's but not annoying you, and it's yeah. not just happening in the game, and yeah. it's really fun, yeah. yeah. Especially when Otherwise, you find yourself like, kind of singing it to yourself as, as, yeah. you're, <laughs> exactly. as you're not playing it. So. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know. In terms of environmental music... sounds, I guess, I don't know, I didn't really notice anything too crazy. I mean, when you, like, shot pots and stuff, they broke, and or, like, you could hear them. Sure, um, yeah. Like, the, the, like, the weapon... Um, sounds were pretty yeah, pretty good, good i guess and, yeah it, it's nothing that blew me away i guess but yeah you know. i mean i didn't have any major gripes with it and i guess that's kind of along the same lines of what you were saying with the music because yeah, i didn't really notice it so i'm not gonna say anything too bad about it <clears throat> yeah I, if you don't notice it i think it's i mean to me it's personally like average to above average yeah. like that means it's pretty good voice acting um i, think it was I don't solid. know it was solid. Yeah, I didn't really notice it too much. I liked Roran's voice acting. Some Rodin, of his lines... Yeah, yeah Rodan. Yeah, there you go. Did I say <laughs> Roran? Um, yeah. Rodan, like, some of his lines were, like, kind of funny. He is um, ridiculous. But, like, the first time you went into hell and yeah. heard that line, and then, like... And I then he repeated... Yeah. yeah, in yeah. the first game, they kind of repeated a lot. Or, yeah. they do a lot of repeat, like, as you're going into the gates of hell to, like, talk to him. I don't Talking. think in the second game I even discovered one that repeated, but maybe it's just because I didn't go there as much. I didn't go there as much either, but there was definitely some repeating ones. Okay. Uh, in the second game, mm. well, at the end of the first game, I started skipping those cutscenes a lot because oh. they repeated. Sure. So, I don't know if that actually saved me any time, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I have no idea. Because <laughs> they're like five seconds, and it takes probably five seconds to skip it, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah his voice actor is great. Um... Bayonetta and Bayonetta are awesome, yeah. obviously. Yeah. They kind of um, yeah, flirt with each ki- other as they're talking. <laughs> the kid in the second one's Mommy! pretty good. Or the kid in the first one's pretty good, too, actually, yeah. I kind of yeah. forgot about the kid in the first one. Oh, I actually really like the kid in the second game, too. Like, he's, yeah, he was kid. a great character it's, addition. Yeah. Just, yeah, I know, that's really separate right. from this, but I think that, that he had a really good, yeah, vibe in the game. So, so I think overall the voice acting is good. Um, yeah. I didn't notice it was bad, so... 
Yeah, I didn't have any major issues with it. I can't. I feel uh, like I was gonna say something else about it, but I don't feel like I have anything, actually. So, okay, uh, we can go um, ahead and rate it. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm gonna give sound. I'm gonna say a seven for Bayonetta one. Okay. Cause just cause that song was so good. Hmm. And I'm gonna give Bayonetta two a six. Okay. I'm going to give. Man, I really like that music. Yeah, that song is that music <laughs> in the first one's so good. So let's see. Ten would be like near Automata. Yeah, ten would be like or like um, or uh, Bastion or Bastion's a good one. Yeah, or Transistor or any of those kind of games. Yeah. Um, that's so what I'm, gonna I'm, go with, I'm gonna go with an eight for Bayonetta one, okay, and a six for Bayonetta two, just because okay. the music's a little bit less memorable in the second game. Yeah, that's kind of what my feelings were towards it. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just right. keep in mind, we're not giving the game like an IGN six out of ten when we give it yeah, a six. Exactly. This is like a this is like a above bo- better scale. than most games. Like five is, is average. <laughs> five is yeah. Five is middle of the road. Six is like better than average. Mm-hmm. Seven is better than most games. Eight's pretty good. Nine is probably like the best we've seen this year. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's hard to rate it, but yeah. I okay. Um. So gameplay. One gameplay. Yeah. Um. I mean, we can start talking about difficulty, I guess. <laughs> so you want to start right with the difficulty? So, uh, first of all, it's very clear the first game is way harder than the second game. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> I died a lot in the first game. And I probably died once or twice in the second game throughout the Yeah, I think I, I think I died uh, maybe three or four times in uh, the second game. And I don't know but, if but... some of that could be attributed to me just learning the game more. I don't think so. Because I feel like the at the end harder. of well, even ba- at the end of Bayonetta one, I started to struggle way less. I agree with that. So like I, I died the most probably in the in the first like four chapters of Bayonetta. So I will say that Bayonetta a lot of Bayonetta one's difficulty is because the enemies, like when you see a new enemy, you're not used to it yet. Mm-hmm. I that's when I died the most. Person. Yeah, when you don't really know it's, how to go, and they have some not, enemies that are just really fast and freaking hard. Yeah. Like so the, the enemies, the guys. enemies that I hated the most were those fucking. Um, there was a, the claw guys that had one had red claws and one had blue claws and like yep. dug in the ground and spun. I fucking hated those guys. I hated those guys too. I died by like if I was fighting them, I was like, okay, I'm gonna probably die here. Um, <laughs> but. I, I will stick by my original thing of saying like new enemies for the most besides like the first two levels enemies. Like, mm-hmm. just hard to get used to. There like, was one... It, yeah, go ahead. Like, the warships, I thought, yeah. like... I died on that one right away, because that one... Like, when you first reached those, because those guys were tough. I could, I wasn't used to them. Mm-hmm. And I, j- I fell off the fucking side of the map. Yeah, because you have to time. jump back on after you kill them. That's what's crazy. Mm-hmm. On, uh, I would say the other part of the difficulty with Bayonetta 1 is that there's a lot of... Uh, um, QTEs that kill you if you don't get them. Kill you instantly. Yep. Yeah. And Bayonetta they 2 don't doesn't just have damage that. you. you kill, if you have full health, yeah. You'll just die suddenly, yeah. I died to like the first the dragon boss or something like that the first time mm. I played it because of that. <laughs> Which is yep. really stupid. Yep, it basically comes down to memorization. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that annoyed so, me a little bit about the first one. But but like to the same point, like Bayonetta two had all new enemies, and I didn't feel like they were harder. So I think Bayonetta one was just a harder game. Yeah, I think so too. Bayonetta two didn't introduce really hard enemies until later in the game. I think in the, yeah. in, the in Bayonetta two, you started to fight the enemies from Bayonetta one towards the end of the game. Yep. Um, and yeah, and that actually made it semi difficult compared to the beginning of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Even so, the bosses aren't that hard in the second one. Maybe I just I got really good at dodging in the second game. I think that's really what. Came yeah, that's what. I, that's all you do. In the that's you game. just have to get witch time constantly. That's all yeah. the game pretty much is at the in the, in the long run. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna say I don't know. You're probably gonna differ from me. I think the difficulty in Bayonetta one makes it a better game. Personally, Ugh. I don't know. I I, I, I might I, agree I, with that, but I'm I'm scared of the fact that so if someone wanted to play this on hard or if they're God forbid there's a difficulty above hard on Bayonetta one. That's fair. That sounds like a horrible time. I don't I do think, think that actually, I could get through hard on Bayonetta two. I think I, I don't could. think you can actually play hard without beating normal first. 
No, in the first one you couldn't. In the second one yeah, you could. Exactly. So, which makes me wonder because I know there's a difficulty above hard on Bayonetta too. Um, that would be terrible. Makes me wonder if Bayonetta one. That's how a lot of the games are. Hard, so, yeah, just like Play hard, twice, and then like, the like why the hell are you doing this to yourself? Is like yeah. the, the hardest difficulty. So, I, I mean, yeah, I thought the difficulty was. But it also was frustrating for me because in like chapter two or three, we got to those challenge areas, like the F. F oh, I couldn't do any of the challenges in the first game. They were impossibly hard. Like I, they took me. I took. I spent yeah. an hour on a level in twenty. I was I, I legitimately. <laughs> yeah. Was I would legitimately. Challenge. I would go in. I'd see what the challenge is, and depending on that, I would see if I would want, wanted to do or not. <laughs> if it was like, if it was like kill these en- this many enemies in like this amount of time, they'd be like fuck no, I'm leaving. Sure. So I, I beat every challenge that I found, but I, in the first game I almost found none of them. In the second game I found pretty much, I feel like I found almost all of them. I found like several per level. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really have that hard of a time with any of them. There was a couple that had took me several tries, but most of them I beat on the first or second try. So, I don't know, I, I just found that part of it a little bit more enjoyable, I guess. I agree. I kind of, I think, Yeah. <laughs> and the, like and it sucked because like this is kind of game mechanics I guess like I would expect because they're easier to find in Bayonetta 2 that they'd be a little bit tougher mm-hmm. but it was opposite they were easier to find and they were easier to do yeah they just made the one, game more approachable they were, <laughs> yeah in Bayonetta 1 they were harder and they were also tougher in general like yeah. to do so or harder to find and harder to do so I don't know yeah I kind of agree that was kind of a Strike against Bayonetta one, I guess. Yeah. Mm. So. Um. So in terms of game mechanics, I think both games are freaking amazing. Yeah, they're both the same. Like nothing yeah, changes. There's almost no differences in the game. The, the other than like maybe change. the weapons that you find. Even the weapons, yeah. most for the most part, are the same. I use the swords still through both games. The whole. Oh game. yeah, that's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> the swords are the best. <laughs> they're amazing. So. The only the only disadvantage of the swords is you can't use the like hold down X or Y for shooting guns. But even that is not that big of a deal. So. You can hold it down and you get like a powered up sword attack, though. Yeah, you can unlock that as a skill later on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, but yeah, so the I guess I don't know if we talked about it, but it's kind of like a button smasher type game. Yeah. It's... Where like you have you have kicks and punches, mm-hmm. and you can fire your weapon, your pistols. But I mean that was not useless almost. But uh, you can like do combos with your kicks and punches and jumps essentially and mm-hmm. dodges. So. And that's how you defeated enemies, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. And then you can get special moves that let you do different things, like uh, turn into a bat or a crow or whatever like that to dodge yep. better. Um, there's air dodge that you can unlock in the first game. It's uh, unlocked by default in the second game, I think. As yep. well as the panther thing is unlocked the by default thing, in the yep. second game. Um, yep. But yeah, there's a bunch of different special moves. I didn't really do very many of those because, I mean, I did the crow and the bat because they were useful to dodge stuff. But other than that... I, I, oh. would, I was never going to remember to push hold like push back and then push this key combination to use. The yeah, no, moves. that's yeah. fair. <laughs> I mean, I kind of stuck to like three or four combinations. It was like X X X A or like X X X. Honestly, I mashed X for the most of the game. Yeah. One combination I did use in Bayonetta one and not really in Bayonetta two was like the like the sword dash. Like, well, I guess. I guess if you didn't have the sword, it would be different. But yeah. like, you just dash forward really quickly with your sword, and you like stab oh, a guy. Sure, I never. Even that was that. really good. That one was really good. I used it a ton in Bayonetta one, but then like Bayonetta two, they switched the key or the the combination around. Oh, it sure. was. I think they did anyway. Maybe I'm not wrong. <clears throat> Maybe I just it felt weirder in Bayonetta two for some reason. Hmm. But I just didn't use it in Bayonetta two. But in Bayonetta one, I used it like probably like two hundred times. Did you ever figure out how to craft potions in Bayonetta 2? Yeah. Okay, because I think I skipped past the thing where it originally told me. And so I'm just looking around the inventory. I saw them on the right-hand side, and I had no idea how to get to them. Like, I just tried every key, every freaking button. So I didn't discover until, like, chapter 14 or 15 when I Googled it that I had to go to the recipe book. You had to, you had to go to the book, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to craft that stuff, because it that, was different okay. than the first game. That as like as somebody that like is a UI developer, like that pissed me off because that's not how that should work at all. Yeah, I thought it would be like an R key or something like that. You can see the UI on the right side of the screen. (laughs) For crafting potions. That's in the first game. That all you had to do is press like right trigger basically to get to. Yep. 
But, but they had it too. You had to go to the book randomly yeah. to get it. Yeah, that. And then oh. it actually changes the UI too when you push the book. It wasn't the same. Yeah, it didn't it just open page weird. on the right. It actually opened a new menu. Yeah, it was weird. It was very strange, but. All right. Yeah, I didn't so, figure that out until later. Um, so we kind of talked about controls already a little bit. I mean, yeah, we kind of delved into that. Um, dodging is the most useful thing in the game. I don't know dodging is that. super satisfying when you get the perfect. Because when you off. when you dodge, you kind of, you get the like the perfect dodge, which slows down time, mm-hmm. which is great. Slows um, you also time, have too. you also have a magic meter what we haven't mentioned yet. Oh yeah, that fills up as you hit people. Which and by the way, I think part of the reason why Bayonetta one is so hard is once you get hit, you lose some of that magic meter. And Bayonetta two, that doesn't happen. That's not you true. Keep it. Are you, you sure? Keep, yep, you you lose it in beta two as well, hundred percent. I swear to God, that's wrong. Nope. Maybe I just didn't get hit that much. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get hit much. That no, I thought the exact same thing actually for the first half of the game, and then I noticed it later on as I was getting hit. More. Interesting. Because I actually was like, oh, they, they changed it so it's easier now. <laughs> maybe it, maybe you don't lose as much. Some of it also had to do with the fact that there was a thousand more challenges that we could do, so we got our level up magic. Yeah, and I almost had two quicker. full. I almost had two full like magic had, bars by the end. I had two. I had over two full health uh, magic oh, bars. Yeah. Really nice. And I had one and three fourths health bars. <laughs> like, yeah, so, I had a lot of yeah. Which is crazy. So compared to the first game, I barely got over one. I think. For mm-hmm. health bars. Um, so, anyway, so once you get your magic up, you can do special attacks. Yes. Which are cool. Which is one thing they changed in Bayonetta 2 as well, is that now you could push L instead of yes. using your torture oh, attack, yes. and you can attack everyone in the area just with, like, yeah. like regular attack, which it just doesn't. It, d- it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do, like, a ton of damage to one person, but it does a good amount of damage to everybody. Yeah, but you're, if you're getting hoarded by a bunch of things, yeah, yeah you can kill a bunch it's of Yeah, it's super them, useful. Which was yeah. so much more useful than the torture attack sometimes, yeah. to be honest. So, I almost always use that versus the torture. <clears throat> oh yeah, me too, for the most part. Mm-hmm. There was only a couple yeah. enemies you could even use the torture attack on. And, and the only time that I wouldn't is when it was a boss. So. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah, There's a lot more enjoyable. bosses in Bayonetta 2, too. Mm-hmm. Like, mid-level bosses. Or mini bosses, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think there was a lot. Yeah, especially with the demons. The demons change it up a lot. And I really like that. So. Okay, let's rate it. And let's right. more. I'm going to give Bayonetta one and eight. Okay. Because the gameplay is what sold me on the game. Yeah, I agree. How fun it was. Um, I'm going to give Bayonetta two a nine. It is, honestly, it is honestly one of the better gameplay games I've played. It's it's Damn. when a game. I know it sounds weird, but when a game reminds me of Ratchet and Clank, I know that I'm gonna really, really, I really like the gameplay of that game, and that's why. That's how I feel about um, like a lot of my favorite games, like Super Mario sixty four. Just when I really like the gameplay a lot, it just feels yeah. good to play. So yeah, All right. it reminds me of some of my favorite games. So, so. <laughs> Game mechanic wise, I'm gonna break it down a little bit because okay. I don't know how else to do this. Game mechanic wise, like this fighting, like the fighting style type game, I think it's the best I have played. Mm-hmm. Like it blows like God of War out of the water. Yeah, it blows like joke. any <laughs> any bat any Batman game blows them out of the water. Mm-hmm. Like the only thing missing in this game is like a parry move, which yeah. you don't even really miss because of dodge. I'm pretty sure you can unlock a parry. Uh, no, it was a uh, it was a uh, art. It was not an artifact, whatever they call them, the treasures. You could unlock oh. a treasure that parried. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. So apparently there's parry. <laughs> um, the difficulty in Bayonetta 1, I think, gives it a edge over Bayonetta 2. Oof. So I'm going to say, I'm going to reverse these. I'm going to say 9 and 8. So 9 yeah. for Bayonetta 1, 8 for Bayonetta 2. Sure. Just because, like, even, like, gameplay-wise, like... I think I almost enjoyed playing this more than, like, I enjoyed playing... I don't want to... Or as the same as playing Mario Odyssey, I'd say. Okay. I know they're completely two different games. Like, yeah, Mario Odyssey is more of, like, a... But, like, I I didn't get bored of it, so I, I think that's... Can I just say that I'm actually really worried about the new God of War now after playing this? <laughs> I can see that. We'll see. I think the new God of War is going to be more, very like, different. It's going to be more, like, RPG... Like, yeah, it's going to be more fighting. like a Last of Us type game, I think, honestly. Yeah. Is, so. Yeah. Okay. Patient. All right, last little piece. Well, last before we do the personal bias and stuff, so. Yep. Uh, narrative. So the story and the setting of the games, 
Um, All right, I will try to break down the first one's story. Mention. Yeah, if you want to try to break down the second one's story. Uh, if you want to talk about it, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, to, like, I think we should. Exactly but, but, I mean, yeah, that's not what... So, I mean, we kind of talked about it already. Bayonetta 1, you're searching for these eyes, this, this gem that's supposed to help you with your memory because you just woke up from, like, a 200-year nap or something. Um, so... I kind of spoiled it already. This this gem's an eye. It's the left and the right eye of the world, which comes into play in the second game. And basically, when you combine them, you get all this power to be like a god and stuff. And so that kind of comes into play as you're searching for it. That's why all these angels are coming after you, is because you are actually the right eye of the world, and you're searching for the left. And they want the right eye, so they get power. So they have power for themselves, <clears throat> essentially. <clears throat> as you do this, you meet Luca, which is this. Um, I don't know, kind of Playboy type guy. I yeah. don't know how to he, explain. He knew Bayonetta when he was like a child and thought Bayonetta yeah. killed his, his parents. His dad, yeah. yeah. And he's a journalist, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of a cool, unique character. Um, and then also throughout the first game, so he's kind of in and out throughout the first game, um, you know, just helping Bayonetta out and stuff. Also throughout the first game, you come across this Jean character. Um, who is kind of your rival. I'll say that. Um, yeah. That's the best, like, you just you have multiple fights with her and whatever. She's also an umber, umber witch, so she has a lot of the same powers as you, and you fight her a lot. And then you also come across this kid in Bayonetta 1 that, um, well, she's similar to you, I guess I'm going to say, without trying to spoil. I'm not going to try to spoil the game's ending by any means. Mm-hmm. or like the story behind the ending but finally at the end you fight like the the boss who's called balder um he basically wants the two eyes so he can become a god who's or wake dad, up the way. god <laughs> who's your dad yep um so mm-hmm. um basically at the end then boss you end up fighting this god who's literally destroying worlds when you're fighting them like she like she, I guess. I don't know if it's really she or this giant, like, machine thing. Yeah, but, I kind of forget um, the name, too. Yeah, but anyway, this god thing, like, is, like, shooting, like, universes at you and shit. And, like, causing you <laughs> to, like, I don't know. It's just weird as shit. But it's really cool. So, that's kind of the story behind one. And yeah. then we kind of we kind of went over the setting a little bit. It's in this, like, ancient town of Vigrid. Or this Italian town of Vigrid where, like, basically, that's the town where the Umber, li- which is we're at like 500 years ago so yep. you kind of have this unique like you're remembering stuff as you play the game and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah that's that's the first <clears throat> all right and i'm much. gonna i'm gonna do my best to describe the second story it's actually a lot i think it's a lot more complicated than the first story <laughs> in terms of trying to I, describe what's going on because there's a lot of I mean, time travel stuff. it kind of is yeah i guess <clears throat> yeah so basically the base premise of band two is that you are basically just in the city living with your um, now friend, Jean, from the first game, who mm-hmm. was your rival. Um, but you guys were actually friends growing up, so... Besties. <laughs> Besties. And then uh, all, of a, all of a sudden the city is attacked by demons. So, or angel, angels attack the, the city, and then the demon shows up as well, and they're like, what the heck? Like, why are the yep, demons attacking? Yeah. We're supposed that to be friends sense. with the yep. demons. What the heck? And then uh, John is attacked, and her soul is claimed by the depths of hell and dragged down, um, just like the enemies um, in the first game did when you kill them. Um, so after that attack, Vanna decides she's going to go try to save her by going to, uh, is it Fimbleventer? Is that how you pronounce it? Fimbleventer, Fim- yeah. Fimbleventer, which is like the gates of hell. Um, just That's it. It's actually like this giant mountain that. Yeah, is, it's a giant has mountain that has a like realm or a portal. You can you can get to the gates of hell. of hell or you can get to heaven. I think is what it was. Oh okay. You, like it's the connection between the three realms, which is heaven, hell, and then the human realm, the normal yeah. realm. I don't know. Um, so. And on her way there, she meets this kid called Loki, um, mm-hmm. who does not know why, but he's also planning to go to Fimbleventer. He just doesn't have his memory for this. It seems kind of like it's similar yeah. to the first game. So we, so I need to stop you there because the reason she knows this kid is unique is because he can see her and she can see yep. him, I guess. Yeah. Which we kind of completely can. forgot to, to like say, but like normally people can't see these, these Umbra witches or these, um, whatever the fuck the angel guys are called. I can't think of. Uh, sages. 
sages. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. or the demons or, or angels that you fight. So, mm-hmm. okay. Um, but they're constantly pursued by this masked lumen sage, and then uh, this mysterious prophet. Um, who mm-hmm. kind of reveals after a little while that he's actually looking for Loki. He's hunting Loki. Uh, Banna has almost nothing to do with what's going on with their, their yeah. shit. Um, yeah. I do think that uh, it's revealed eventually that the Lumen Sage is Balder. Um, a young version of Balder, I think, right? Um, no. Right? No? That's incorrect. It's the Balder stayed alive in the last game after you killed him. And that's the actual boulder that you fought in the first game hmm. younger boulder doesn't come in until later in the game with the time I, travel i don't know if i believe you i mean i, I might be wrong research this i might be wrong but that's how i understood it because um, i think it, because he has the broken like eyepiece at the beginning of the game and that's because you killed him in the second in the first one. Oh, okay so i think you might yeah i think you might be right well, yeah. that's, that's weird, though, because when... I know we're kind of, like, discussing this as we're talking about it, but when you guys come back from the time rift, how, how does he not how does he not know who you are? He just thinks, you're, you... this, he just thinks you're this witch that killed, killed, like, that's bad, and he doesn't know that you're... What part of the game are you talking about right now? Um, I feel like... I don't know. I'm, in, I don't I'm, I'm confused that. by the story now. You've confused me because I'm pretty sure that it's like a young. I thought it was a young Balder. But maybe I'm, I'm pretty. Sh- maybe I'm, I'm pretty not. sure it's the same Balder that was in the first one. Okay. The only young Balder comes in later in the game when you okay. find when I'm you gonna, go back I'm in gonna, time. I'm gonna look at the story synopsis and try to. Just, I'm trying to like parse through it as I'm talking. Okay. Um. Anyway, right. okay. Let's just move on. Pretend I didn't say anything about who that character do you was. Want, do you want me to continue on? No, and I can you do look it. at it stuff? Okay. Um, so Bayonetta reaches Inferno, um, travels in the depths to save John's soul with the help of Rodin, who's actually that that was an awesome boss fight, by the way. When you're, yeah, when you're working with Rodin. Rodin was destroying everybody. Like, yeah, I didn't he's even fucking have a chance amazing. to attack. He just yeah. destroyed everybody instantly. Yeah. Which by the way, yeah. did you see that there was an uh, there was like a treasure that you could buy for like all gold nine 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 to play yeah, as, did... to play as Rotom? Oh, is that what that was? Oh, I, okay. I assume that's what it was because it said something about yeah. cloning Rotom or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, Bayonetta saves John, um, sends her soul back to the human world so that she can rest up, um, get better, um, and except that the Mass Sage attacks again and finally reveals his true identity as a young Balder who is trying to hunt down Loki as part of his revenge. The masts. I'm reading this right now. Yes. Damn. <laughs> the mass sage attacks out. again and finally reveals. Yeah, he's a young Balder who's trying to hunt down Loki. Um, okay. So even though she's able wrong. to save the boy from Balder's attacks, Loki suddenly loses control of his power and sweeps both Bayonetta and Balder into a time rift that sends them 500 years in the past. <clears throat> so that's when okay. they're at, they're in Vigrid um, during the witch hunts, and Bayonetta yeah. meets her mother Rosa. Um, and the two witches. Uh, like they, they play through, yeah. They it's basically play through a huge segment. One thing I thought was really cool is that um, during this segment, I know I'm kind of going off track. There's one section where you play through the exact same spot as in Bayonetta one. Yeah. Except that in Bayonetta one, remember it did like a flashback type thing. Yeah, and, you were and you're fighting playing a big boss with all the switches. It was the exact same segment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in I thought that was too, awesome. Yep, yeah. That's when my playing, mind got blown right there. You're legitimately playing the flashback in Bayonetta yep. 2 from Bayonetta 1. Yeah, that was really cool. I thought I that was really neat. Um, anyway, Bayonetta... Oh, wait. Um, during this time rift section, we meet someone who looks exactly like Loki, um, which you later find out is like the other half, the better half of Loki. Or sorry, the, the worse half, the evil half. Of Loki, yep. um, and apparently Loki is like half of. Oh my god, I don't know how to describe this. I should just continue reading this instead of trying to describe it. Uh, so Lopter, that's this other guy's name. The the other the bad half claims that the eyes of the world, uh, which Bayonetta has, belong to him. Uh, yep. Later, meeting with the young Balder, Bayonetta arrives too late to stop Lopter from murdering Rosa, um, which kind of shows that it was not Loki. Balder thought that it was Loki that killed. Rosa, but it was actually the the worst half, the evil half. Yeah. Um, but this is this is now. There's now a second version. There's a younger Boulder and then a younger younger Boulder. 
What? This is right. I think this is the same Balder that was pulled um, into the current timeline. Yeah, that's it's confusing. Got, when you say that, that's it's, confusing. It's got to be a different Balder, though. But but we don't really know how the. Oh, you know what it is. I bet you Lopter pulled in the young um, version of Balder just to try to track down Loki. Maybe that's what. So it it's is. probably the same. God, this game. Yeah. I, yeah. This... <laughs> <laughs> it's really complicated. That's why I'm saying I'm going to I'm gonna do my best on this, but it's extremely like, complicated. I, I, I'm going to continue to think that the Balder from all of the game, except for this younger version that you just meet when you're just talking about it, was the actual Balder that you fought in the first game. And my it, my explanation... I think it is, but it's, so the young, it's the younger him. And it's, it actually happened. Like, So that's kind yeah. of something that's revealed later. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but... Um, <clears throat> Anyway, okay, just continue. Loki, just continue. yeah. They they travel back in time now, or back forward, with Balder now knowing that uh, Loki's actually not bad. They both have a common goal to go take down Lopter. Um, <clears throat> so they go um, to Filibenter to try to track him down. And but Jean is now revived. Um, they both go to the top of the mountain. They confront uh, Lopter. Loki is there as well. Um... Lopter explains that he and Loki were once the god of chaos, Acer, the the boss, I think, from the first game. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong, I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, a- Acer, I think, was the final boss that you fought, the one you were talking about, the destroying the worlds. <laughs> maybe um, not, maybe Jubileus is the. Oh, boss you're right. You're right. Okay. Anyway, Acer is the one that created the eyes of the world, apparently. Um, yeah, he created the eyes of the world, essentially creating good and evil, and then this yep. other human realm. But he had so. to split his soul into two halves, which is what Loki and Lopter are. Um, mm-hmm. And Loki is the good half. He was given the power to control the eyes directly, and Lopter takes that power for his own, and that's the boss that you fight, is Lopter with both eyes, essentially. And he actually becomes A or whatever the fuck this... Yeah, Acer. The, the Acer. boss that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, once the clash... As the final clash takes place, Loki remembers that Acer's true power is to erase anything he wants from the world. He uses that power to destroy the eyes, um, yep. weakening Lopter and making him easier to kill. Um, yep. So they kill which, him. Wh- which, by the way, was funny because easier to kill is like he doesn't attack you at all. Yeah, he's like it's just it, it, that's when the music <laughs> plays that we were talking about earlier. And it's like, oh, this is the end of the fight. You're going to just destroy him now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so his body is destroyed and only his soul remained. Uh, he ch- attempted to escape to another time to try his plan again. Yeah. Um, Baller stops him and absorbs his evil soul. Yep. Despite exactly. warnings from Loki. So this is the cool part because. That means this that is, the young Balder, the only reason he's an enemy in the first game is because he because was... because he saved the world in the second game. He saved the world in the second game. <laughs> yes, I... Yeah, it's... I, that was fucking amazing. That was awesome. That, that, but up, up until that point, the story was, you know, pretty good, but not amazing. And then they did that, and it fucking blew my mind. Yeah. And I was like, this is and, so good. And Balder's like, you have to stop me. Like, ask Bayonetta to stop him when he tries to... Like, do something yep. bad. Which has already happened, which is the crazy part. <laughs> which has already happened, exactly. It already happened, yep. Oh, God, it's so good. <laughs> and and so then the, the end scene, the very end scene of the game, mm-hmm. is you see Balder being all evil and shit, is yep. like the last cutscene. Which yep. is basically a prequel to the fucking first, first game. First game, yep. <laughs> so... So I'm gonna right. go ahead. I know. I know you said you like this story more in the first game, but after I don't know. You all kind this, of convinced me. <laughs> kind of convinced me the second game is better. I know. I just spent like 15 to 20 minutes talking about that story because it's super complicated. But <clears throat> okay, go for it, Ron. Um, oh, we're rating, right? All right, actually, it might be my turn to rate first. I think it's your turn, yeah. All right, I'm oh, gonna then. go with. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, were you gonna say something or no? I was gonna say, and then uh, I think you mentioned uh, Luca, but Luca is basically completely useless in the second game. So yeah, he's like there for like tw- <laughs> he's there like two times. He's just there. Yeah, which by the way, in the first game, the scenes where like Luca like grabs Bayonetta's butt and stuff are just fucking hilarious. Just so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. God. Anyway, all right. So, oh man, I want to. Okay, I want to give Bayonetta two story and nine. I'm just saying that right nine. now. Nine. Okay. So, I'm gonna, yeah, Bayonetta 2 Stories of 9. Bayonetta 1, though, is so hard for me, because 
it's it's really good like once you realize what's happening but you keep in mind that's messaging me halfway through the game this game makes no sense i don't know what the hell's going on yeah because it didn't <laughs> you don't know what's going on you until really like the last three four the, the last fourth of the game yeah i'm gonna give it a seven okay yeah that, that so, seems good to me. You just stole that from me because I'm going to give the exact same ratings. <laughs> okay. Nine to two and seven to one because that like was one's exactly one's a really saying. good story. One's a really good story, like better than most game stories. And then, but nine two, is like, like blows my mind. <laughs> it, the ending, honestly, and two when you save when Baldur saves the world, essentially, mm-hmm. like from like the evil spirit going away, just is like oh my god, that is. So genius. Yeah, it made I'm, you I'm, realize that the whole game, first game, is completely different than the way you saw it before. Mm-hmm. Like he's I actually, actually not a horrible guy. <laughs> I actually like. I want. I, I wish I knew somebody. Quantum. We should make Quantum play two and then one and see what he thinks of them. Oh, just two backwards. Three. Yeah. Yeah. It's anyway, it's a good point. So, I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm I'm a little bit worried about what three is going to be about. Yeah, I have no idea. Based on the first, yeah. Based on the first two, god damn it, let me talk. (laughs) The first two intertwine so well that I think three is going to be a disappointment. You think so? I think so. I I don't think it can be any better than two. Like I don't. The story, I don't know if it can be better. It's they gotta make improvements on gameplay at that point. I don't know know how they're gonna. But I'm still excited, obviously, because maybe it's maybe it just starts a new like. Could be. Based on the teaser we saw, it almost looked like Bayonetta died, but I don't really know. Or gets injured. Or gets or very injured, injured. yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe we'll play right. through with a crippled Bayonetta the whole game. <laughs> One-legged Bayonetta. That would be hilarious. Yeah. In a wheelchair? Yeah. Um, oh my god, Bayonetta wheelchair. Okay. Alright, so we ha- I don't know if we really discussed this. What was your favorite part of... Let's go both games. Just I want to know your favorite part of both games. Um. Okay, so... I know what the second game is right away, but I don't know about the first game. Um, All right, I'll um, go first then. Okay, go ahead. All right, so my favorite part of the first game was definitely the difficulty. I think it fits the game well, and I almost wish that Bayonetta 2 was harder, but yet slightly easier than the first. Sure. Like, it, it was such a discrepancy that it was almost to a point where, like, Bayonetta 2 just felt like a completely different game. Like, if it would have been hard, but not, like mind-blowingly hard like the first one mm-hmm. i think differently um so that was my first and then um the second game i think is probably the story sure i think I, so see i was crazy i was thinking of specific spots during the game you know, oh that's where I'm, maybe that's where i'm getting okay well then my about. favorite part about the second game is when Baldur saves the evil spirit um from escaping sure um I'm going to be pretty general with the first one, even though I just said that. Um, the first one, I'm just going to go ahead and say the boss fights in general were freaking awesome. Like, especially... Agree, yeah. like the, the Indian that boss the fight variety. was so good. Like, oh my god, there's like bullet hell freaking missions in the game. <laughs> like yeah, there is. Around. Yeah, there's, in both There's games. a driving in section that reminded me of Sonic Racing. Oh, I forgot about the fucking <laughs> motorcycle section. We didn't even talk about that oh. during gameplay. <laughs> But yeah, there's freaking there's just a lot of variety in the game, and the boss yeah. fights are super fun because a lot of them are also extremely varied mm-hmm. from each exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. The second game, my favorite moment in the game was when you when you play the spot in the past that is in the first game. That just blew my mind. Like as soon as that happened, I was like, "Oh my fucking god!" And I got like really excited <laughs> during that. So yeah, it was really good. <laughs> It was really cool that and just kind of realizing what was happening. It was it, as I'm like talking, I'm like as I'm reading through the story, I'm starting to like appreciate it even more. So yeah. Um, what okay. is our biggest complaint we have about the game? I'm oh, just gonna man. go ahead right away and say in the first one difficulty. That's 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 it. <laughs> can I can I complain about difficulty for? Can I say it's the, my favorite part in my biggest complaint? <laughs> is that the? I have to say I can. It could be a thing if you want to. I, I kind of want it. I'm going to say difficulty and also just bigger in general. I was really disappointed in how they handled that. Sure. I think it could have been a lot cooler. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah I understand difficulty. I don't know about second game. I don't know if I have. 
I don't know. Uh, maybe I maybe have... that's just that it's too same. It's too much the same. It's very similar to the first game in gameplay. It's mechanics. not a bad thing. Though. It's not a bad thing. It's just like maybe they could have changed it up a little bit more. They could have added some more stuff. I I was I'm gonna say I was a little bit disappointed in some of the boss fights. Okay. There was only one boss fight. The one that you did with Ro- Rodin, that one was really really hard. That sure. fuck. The, the, oh no, the, the devil woman. Yeah, the devil woman, and also the fucking like. The ones that turned you into little girls. What if I told you that I got a platinum on that without getting hit? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> I that, did. That bo- <laughs> I, I know you did. I don't care. Um, uh, I, yeah, I think the bosses could have been harder in the They, were, they were definitely easier in the second game, yeah. I would agree with that. <clears throat> Alright. All right. So, so now we just have our straight-up bias. Any personal feelings that we have towards the game? Um, our personal bas- rating, basically. Yeah, basically your personal game. rating. Yeah. Well, like, what would we rate the game out of ten? This is tough. As a whole. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm ready. Okay. I got this. I'm gonna give Bayonetta Bayonet one a seven. Okay. And I'm gonna give Bayonetta two an eight. All right. Um. I'm gonna give Bayonetta one a seven. I'm gonna give Bayonetta two a nine. Ah, I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> I'm I was super, super happy with playing through it finally. I played the first game shortly on Wii U when it first came out, and I just didn't get into it, and I ended up like needing money at one point, so I sold it before I actually got to play more of it. <clears throat> but playing it now has made me really regret doing that, so I'm very glad that I played through it. Yeah, this was really good. I'm super happy that I bought these, and like, oh man. It's definitely worth the money too, wasn't it? It's not even a oh, full, yeah. full sixty bucks. I don't remember. Yeah, that. it was full sixty. Was it? Okay. Yep. Sorry, I'm just totaling my stuff up. Um plus, ten plus six. Plus eight plus nine. <clears throat> so I gave Bandit a one of thirty seven out of fifty. And Bandit a two of forty one out of fifty. What the fuck? Where'd my Which name go? freaking good. Why'd you do that? Alright, so I gave Bayonetta 1 apparently a 35, and I gave Bayonetta 2 a 38. So. Which Neat. I, where did you get more points? You gave more points to Bayonetta 2 in story. And in and, bias. And in graphics, and in bias, which would be 3 points. And then in 2, in 1, you gave... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, graphics. You, you graphics really says part now. Oh, yeah, that's two points. Yeah. So, all right. Makes sense. Well, but yeah, that's uh, that was Bayonetta. Oh, that was both Bayonetta games. That was honestly easily my happy surprise so far this year. Oh like, yeah. I didn't expect to like these as much as I did at all. How honestly, good I thought those they were games were. Just like cheesy. Oh man. <laughs> silly games, but the second game had an amazing story. Yeah. And super good. So we we almost gave you gave a four out of five essentially to the yeah. first, to the second game, which makes that I mean that kind of aligns with how I feel about it. That's I would give it. And and my thirty eight yeah is basically another four to five, which I think is probably what I would give the. So yeah, yeah. In, so we we did good. We did it. All Just right. For reference, we gave God of War a thirty. <laughs> Holy shit! Did we only give it a thirty? Yeah. Honestly, that, that kind of makes sense to me. Like, if we're talking, I mean, it w- three out of five is a is a pretty solid game, so it's above average. Yeah, that's still an average. Yeah, it's still like <laughs> this an is average like to above this average is like game. a god tier. So anything forty and above, in my opinion, is a god tier game. Yeah, I Even mean, anything above forty or above, <laughs> anything with a forty or above is like averaging an eight on all these categories we gave it. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah. So, any anything to say? Any final thoughts? Uh, I am very happy I played these, and I'm looking forward to 3 a lot more now. I am too. I'm super excited for 3. And 3 was maybe a game that I wasn't even, like, going to get Even interested away, in, but, yeah. Yeah, but now it's definitely a game I'm going to get, so. And now yeah. I hope Bayonet is in Smash again. <laughs> I kind of do too. It makes me respect the character a lot more. Maybe I need to start playing the games with in Smash that, like, the characters are in, and I'll yeah. respect them a little bit more. Maybe. We got, we're playing Earthbound later this year, so... We are Earthbound. <laughs> playing some Ness. Right. Um, so, not next week, but the week after is our next podcast, because we yeah. do bi-weekly. Um, we're, we're playing the Nintendo 64 game Blast Core. Yep. 
Um, and so, so we'll be discussing that. Um, we're changing yeah. up our schedule a little bit, so we won't be bouncing back and forth each uh, uh, classic game because there's so many big games coming out. We want to make sure that we have time to play them before we can talk about yeah. them. So we'll be doing three games in a three classic games in a row. Um, in terms and then of we'll be doing, yeah, yeah, three three classic games in a row. Um, in terms of the next three, so the um, Blast Core and then two other games after that. Uh, Star Fox sixty four is after that, and then we're going to do uh, Diddy Kong Con- Donkey Kong Country two. Not Diddy Kong Racing. Right? It's it's Diddy, Kong it's Donkey Kong Country two Diddy Kong's Quest or something like that. So that's why I thought of it. Okay. <laughs> um, and then after that, we're doing three new games in a row because there's a lot of new games coming out <clears> in the <throat> April time frame. So we just want to make sure that we can get all of those, um, basically done. Cool. So, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got to say about Bayonetta. That was a lot more than I thought we were going to talk about this. To be honest. I was, mean, yeah. We I think I think twenty minutes of that was talking about Bayonetta two's story. So. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, at least 15. It was so good, though. It was, yeah. Um, in closing, uh, I want to thank Tokyo Machine for letting us use your song uh, Pixel at the intro of the podcast. And then we want to thank the Fat Rat for letting us use the song Monody, which you hear in the outro here. Um, and then you can follow us on Facebook at Rage Quitters Podcast or YouTube. We have some content that we're pumping out there. I'm trying to make it so I upload weekly now. I kind of didn't this weekend, but hopefully this Sunday I'll start doing that more more uh, frequently. So uh, you can look at us on YouTube at Rage Quitters, by the way. And then uh, Twitter is Rage at Rage Quitter Cast. So nice, yeah, great. So. That's it. Uh, thanks That's everybody for listening to us ramble about Bayonetta One and Bayonetta Two uh, for, next... for over an hour. <laughs> for over an hour. Yes. Um, next, I don't think we'll talk as much about Blast Core. No, I don't think so. I think it'll be a little shorter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like probably half as long. But well, this is two games to be fair too. So this is two games as well. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see thanks. you all next time.